Yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with Firefighter Daigo. We got episode 10. And last episode, a rescue that probably shouldn't have been as stressful as it was, yeah. was finally wrapped up. Hey, man, we say it all the time, what a time to be an anime fan, but what a time to be a subscriber of this channel. If you haven't already, hit that sub button. But like he said, the rescue got saved or pretty much wrapped up. That boy, Daigo, I still want to know how he got himself into that situation. I hope they go back to it, but we got to see them go back to his backstory, and that was also fire to see. Yes, sir. Asahina Daigo gave him a mission, save 140 mm -hmm. people. And it's crazy that Daigo's dad, Daigo's dad was the one who ran the building. Yeah, that's GG. tough. Especially, Especially because after uh, hearing... Yuki yep. was like, "Yeah, fuck that nigga. If he was still alive, I'd kill him. Or if he was free, I'd kill him. Whatever." He's... Oh and... no, he died. Yeah. And it makes me wonder how many more people probably feel that same way. It shows how I mean, Daigo literally damn near got drowned as a jet. So probably a lot. Mm-hmm. But hey man, you ready to jump into this episode, bruh? Let's ride. Unclip, nigga. He went out like Clifton went out. You stuck? Damn. Grab that nigga. If you don't take that nigga out. <laughs> nigga. <laughs> He's dying. Daigo, I ain't gonna lie. You running out of air too. Tokyo Shobocho, Tatsuta Shobosho no Nakamura Yuki des. Nakamura Yuki. Oh, wow. The girl. Uh huh. Wow. That's crazy. ほんとだ。この子は。おお、ねがん それで家の裏へ回ろうとして。そうか。その時ですね。オレンジの消防士さんが声をかけてくれたのは。そう、he 
This nigga really thinks fast, bro. That's just unfucking fortunate. Well, that explains how he got inside, at least. あの時はちょっと怖かったけど、消防士のお兄さんが大丈夫って言ったし、お話ししてくれたし、どんな。よく気がついたねって。外から回れば地下室に入れるって気づいてすごいって褒めてくれた。Nah, Loki, that is actually really calm for a little girl in that situation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's hard. That's actually tough. よく頑張ったね。ガッツあるぜ。私がカジバへ入っていけるのもあの人の一言だった。その時お姉さんのことも教えてくれたよ。その瞬間、俺たちは水に飲み込まれる。俺が合図したら息を止めて目をつぶって。二人とも体が壊れていくのがわかる。そりゃ怖いよな。でもこれでは溺れてしまうぞ。俺の友達で中村ゆきっていうすごい女子がいるんだ。君と同じで誰よりも視野が広い。女だ、ドアケ、こっち。中村、お前、二階からの脱出もありと思って長谷部と渡りに配置してもらってた。実践ならそうするで
忍者の仕事は敵の陣中においての情報収集です数々の任期は危険地帯への,の,のためのものなので現代の消防資機材と驚くほど似ているどんなに無謀でも俺使ったことありますも幸運に過ぎないと思っていたこんなのでも<笑>お,お姉さんどうしたのありがとうマコさんとてもありがとうございましたファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッチーシーファッユキさん、大きくなったら私も。I want to be just like you. Yeah. Ah. Wait for me. So she's still gonna be in the field. For the other two, did it then? Yuki, it's so good. Shun. ごめんね、気負けに。いやいやいやいやいやいやいや。<笑>その俺、今までいろいろ無神経で、ごめん。おる、大悟くん帰っちゃったよ。どうしたの？あ,あ、なんかあいつ用事ができたって。最後のやつあいつ気を利かせたな。What a W man! え、なにそれどういうこと ？If that's why。そんな美人さんがしゅんくんと？嘘でしょ ？Damn, what the fuck? Why she bagging on her like that? なんでもないっす Damn, that nigga's so. Shun, it's a good thing. What? It's a good thing. I I mean, she saw the other report they just did, so she probably saw the other ones too. Type shit. Bro, food always looks so much better in anime. Bro, I'm, I'm about to fuck shit. the noodles up. I'm hungry as shit. That's <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Yeah. They he will. Said, he said, "Fuck the meat." He full of dogs. He said, "Fuck the meat." I'm gonna go home and hit the hit the weights. Oh, this little nigga is swollen. Shit. Memento mori. Itsuka shinu koto o moe. Kana. Always be aware of your own mortality. Yeah. 最初はそのつもりで名付けたけど。違うなやっぱりめでたい日本を作るめでたい恵みだ
Creating the ideal Japan. Okay. Okay. Shit. I'm not gonna lie. Seeing Yuki in this role, obviously we got the confirmation that she's is going to indeed jump in the field at some point. But seeing her in this role makes a lot of sense. Cause we were wondering like how it would work going back and forth between Shun and Daigo and Yuki. Yeah. Seeing it like this makes a lot of sense. Especially just from a viewer standpoint, not even just from following Daryl's theory, but following a fighter fighter standpoint, because I'm kind of taking this show the same way how you take a sports anime where you're learning a lot about the subject that you're watching. Like, mm -hmm. it makes sense that after you complete training, you have field work, months of it, before you're actually in the field with it. If that is something that everyone goes through, that is another thing I'm wondering. I don't think it is. Just because they were, like, I think that's special to Fire Company M. Just the way they were talking about, like, ninjas and things of that nature. And how she was, like, tying it back to their learning yeah. for this reason. Like, I think that's special to that company that they make new recruits do this part and then go true. into it. See, that's true. But she was also, like, at least not in the field before she graduated. So, it was like, it makes me wonder, like... Is there a time period of you going through, like, not off sideline work before you're in the field with it? I think in the sense of the part before what she was doing in this episode, yes, I think they do have to do that part. Unless you're, like, Daigo and your first round pick. Type you shit. You go straight okay. from the academy to the field. Okay, type shit. I think the part she did in this episode was different from that, in a sense. That's kind of, like, how I'm seeing it. Yeah, just off of that, like, I tell you what, this episode, it was kind of vanilla, not even kind of, it was vanilla like like shit. I mean, like you said, it was really interesting seeing the favorable squad M in that light, really Yuki, but another thing that was also interesting is how they're studying ninjas and ninja tools. Yeah, they were saying, like, it's kind of, it kind of ties into, like, modern fire equipment. Which I, I low-key want to know more about that, but that is an interesting, like, they were talking about how Ninja's job is to, like, gather intel and shit like that. I don't know what that necessarily has to do with anything. Yeah. Like, it's very interesting. I mean, this whole company in general looks very different from your typical one. And, I'm sure. Which probably is what sets them apart, low-key. Hey, I mean, they got fucking Brett Favre at quarterback and Tom Brady, who retired from the same squad. Like, they got a really rich history. And I love what Yuki was saying, that the new squad that Man Man formed, like, they're set to really shake shit. And I think they will. But I also think Dog Squad or Fua Squad, as they know it, like, I think they will, too, as Hell Yuki yeah. was saying. Hell, yeah. Like... It's dope seeing their dynamic and seeing, like, Yuki in this role and learning, like, uh, just everything about what Daigo and Shun have been doing. Like, I feel like that's dope that she knows about all of that, even if she's not in the field yet. And mm -hmm. how she kind of tied that back to how the reason she's even doing this in the first place for their squad is so that she can get the whole, as long as, uh, what their instructor told them, like, as long as the rescue is successful, you shall bear no penalty. And, like, mm -hmm. truly drive that in, like, just reading the, the reports. Really download shit. that shit. Yeah, really download that shit. So when you get in the field, you truly apply that. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes you got to go outside the box to get that rescue complete. Uh-huh. And I feel like that's really all we've been seeing from Dog Squad so far. Like, oh, yeah. especially at least with this recap. Because that's pretty much what it was, just a recap episode. But... They pretty much just recap that whole theory that long as you get the rescue, that's really all that matters. It don't matter and how. I think, it's another thing, I think another thing that was amazing, too, was one of the survivors where a lot of people in that situation could walk away with trauma. Instead, she walked away with pride because she was proud of being able to make the play that she did. Mm -hmm. And that's all thanks to Daigo stepping out of his comfort zone and opening his mouth and speaking to the survivors. 
Yeah, so that's not something he's comfortable with or something that he's good at, but he still did it to make them feel better about their situation. Mm-hmm. He succeeded in doing it. Mm-hmm. She want to be a firefighter now. And Yuki mm-hmm. said, I'll be waiting for you. That's, I ain't gonna lie, if you meet one of your heroes, especially like a literal hero, yeah. and you say, I want to be just like you, and they say, I'll be waiting for you, that's the that's all the gas you need. It is. That shit rolling, like, Especially if you're a little ass kid, like, boy, I wish I heard some shit like that, nigga. I'd be in the league right now, nigga. Like, nigga, sign me up, shit. But just in general, like, we said it before, we'll say it again. Like, this was really just a vanilla episode, a recap, if you will. Still was nice to watch just because the characters are nice. And it's character building like this that makes you more on the edge of your seat when they go into these danger zones. Mm -hmm. But just looking at this episode, how would you rate it? I'm going to give this episode, I'm going to give it like a, I'm going to give it like an 8.7. Like this episode, first things first, I said when we finished the episode that it felt really short. And the reason it felt short is because aside from the fact that it was vanilla, the recap was like six fucking minutes. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it was still a good watch. It's just basically nothing happened. Like, it was really just information about Fire Squad M. We got what the M stands for. I don't know what the word is, but meaning like, yeah, forming the perfect or the ideal Japan. And I feel like that's dope. And also seeing Yuki like really embracing her role and knowing Type what shit. Shin and Daigo have been going through is fire. So I'm going to give it like an 8.7. 8.7. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. Like like you said, it really wasn't much, but what we saw was fire, especially just seeing Yuki herself step into her role. Like, that was really fire. And I think seeing her and Shun, the little reunion, even though we didn't get much there, it was nice seeing the full circle moment of just her acknowledging all of Shun's growth. Like, I would definitely say this was a nice watch, even though nothing crazy happened. So I'm right there with you, 8.7. Yeah, and it was it was also dope seeing Daigo, like, instead of going to that reunion, he was still clearly thinking about a lot, like, just the way he was looking down, walking, like, that mm-hmm. shit is still on his mind heavy. He That nigga went straight home and got on weights. Mm-hmm. Like, that nigga is clearly not taking that shit lightly. The fact that right he was in that situation so. and had, he could, there was nothing he could do. He just had to wait for help. Rightfully so, too. It's a scary situation to be in. Absolutely. But, hey, man, let us know what you thought about this episode of Firefighter Daigo. You know what I'm saying? Yes, It was vanilla, but it was still pretty gas. You know what I'm saying? But if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit the like button for us. We really appreciate it. Make sure you hit the big red subscribe button as well. And turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss episode 11 or any of our other videos. We drop straight bangers on this channel. You know what I'm saying? All anime for the most part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure you guys click on our description as well. Two links will be waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo, on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. Make sure you guys join that. Come on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that Discord. Come vibe out with us. But, uh, yeah, man. With that being said, SOT out.